Thank you all very, very much for your very kind welcome, and thank you, uh, Reg. Uh, I was very grateful to be uh, invited here by, by Mike Nesbitt, and uh, I think this is the beginning of something uh, very, very important. I, I, I say you're probably surprised to see a bearded leader of Irish nationalism standing on this stage today. Um, but I'm also pretty sure that in a few years' time, Jerry Adams will be telling everybody it was him that was here. Uh, but we're, we're all well used to that by now. At, at, at the beginning of this year, I think we were all of the belief that remembrance and commemoration would be the dominant feature of 2016. As it turned out, managing our momentous centenaries was the easy part. Throughout this year, both traditions on these islands have remembered the diversity and depth of our shared history with a maturity and an openness of which I think we can all be very, very proud. <clears throat> Unusually for us in Northern Ireland, it is our new political present rather than our, the weight of our own history, which is proving so problematic. Whilst we were busy behaving ourselves in 2016, our outside world decided to test the very sinews of its stability. The Brexit referendum fallout, unprecedented flows in refugees and migration, continuing tension between a more protectionist or more open economic model, and the sheer awfulness of the violence in Syria, and in particular in Aleppo. As things fall apart, the centre ground is struggling to know what is worth holding on to. Mainstream politics remains uneasy and unsure as to its place, its power and its purpose. As your leader Mike Nesbitt rightly identified, we are living in an era of uncertainty. The volatility of this moment has, has inevitably been seized upon by those who thrive on the politics of hate and simplistic slogan. But Northern Ireland cannot face inward amidst the bigness and broadness of this evolving world. We may live in a small part of Ireland, but there is a prevailing political wind blowing across our entire continent. And facing into that wind, though we should, all, we should all be confident of one thing, there is nothing wrong in Europe that cannot be cured by what is right in Europe. Looking ahead, the future offers many choices, but the only future worth knowing is one which chooses cooperation. It is that very sentiment and its substance which has always been at the heart of the European Union. Building common ground and common cause is the only effective weapon in the face of, division, uh, of the division and divisiveness which threatens the consensus of decency that is the centre ground. That is why the SDLP is so determined to retain the benefits of the EU and its membership across this island. It is that same principle of partnership which brings me to this stage today. If cooperation is required in Europe, it is equally required in Northern Ireland. Since the election, there's been plenty of interest as to whether the SDLP and the Ulster Unionist Party will work together in opposition. The answer is simple. Of course we will. We are already doing so. Only this week, we have scrutinised and offered solutions to ongoing emergencies in housing, homelessness and in our health service. That will continue and expand during the course of this mandate. The commitment to cooperation does not mean absolute unanimity or uniformity, and nor should it. Let me state the obvious. We are different parties with different politics, different policies and a different vision of the future. Our Irish nationalism and your unionism will not seamlessly fit any time soon. However, this difference does not diminish our ability to pursue our common, the commonality of our immediate cause. Both the SDLP and the Ulster Unionists share the common ground of wanting to make Northern Ireland work. That's a healthy common ground to hold for today and for tomorrow. The constitutional change of the future will be the product of persuasion. But amongst all the pleasantness, let me say something slightly more difficult. Let me say something about the possibility of that constitutional change. 
If the last year has shown us anything, it is that we cannot blindly trust the permanence of the status quo. As a Nationalist Party leader, I have been honest that we have thus far failed to develop a credible and detailed vision for what a new Ireland might look like. We're beginning that work. As the SDLP engages in that work, I would welcome if unionism began its own process of mapping out how it sees the future. The United Kingdom, as you know it, as we all know it, uh, is no more. We all need to renew our thinking uh, as to what political shape Britain and Ireland take in this new century. My appeal is this. Try to convince us of your vision for the future, and we'll try to convince you of ours. Let it be a discussion based on hard facts and hard truths. Most of all, let it be creative, and then in time let the people decide. That's the way politics is supposed to work. It's how it works when it's at its best, without threat and without theatrics. It is the generation of the newly re refreshed kind of politics which is the big prize at, this, at, at stake at this time ahead, and it is badly needed. From a position in 1998 where politics here was shown to be creative and courageous enough to overcome the Anglo-Irish conflict, we are now sadly in a position where the public is unsure as to whether the executive ministers can really deliver any difference at all. That's had a real effect. Turnout at elections and trust in our institutions has plummeted. The biggest challenge of this official opposition is to begin the process of proving that our devolved institutions contain a power and importance beyond simply the maintenance of peace. True reconciliation here will not be achieved through warm words, but through pr practical politics, a politics which fundamentally changes the economic and social patterns of this society. For those who cast predictable cynicism upon the scale of this ambition, let them remember that both of our parties were the architects and builders of the institutions which stand today. It was our two parties who had the bravery to imagine and build the change we now live amongst. We continue to believe. We continue to believe that high politics is capable of delivering the radical change we all wish to see. In contrast, the DUP and Sinn Féin have no such ambition or aspiration for our people or this place. They never had. They believe the symbolism of their coalition suffices, and nothing more. They're all guff and no government. Even with 55 press officers, 16 special advisers and their new press secretary, they struggle to fabricate the illusion of progress. Together we must break up and break down that cosy establishment. We do, that, we do that by building trust and credibility across this society. We do it by embracing the politics of partnership and cooperation. Let's be honest, we're not there yet. We have, to, we have work to do and that work goes on. Our success can permanently transform the politics of this place. Old battles of identity will be replaced by new battles of ideas. For me, for the SDLP, that's well worthwhile. Thank you very much. So, Colm Eastwood bringing uh, some of the delegates at the Ulster Unionist Party conference to their feet there for that uh, groundbreaking speech the first time.